Hey guys, Mike here at Anime Tutorials, and welcome back to a new video. All right, well, today we're going to do a dynamic simulation with uh, n particles, and for that, we're going to use the uh, particle flocker uh, plugin uh, created by TechToast. Okay, so before we get started, so where can you get that plugin? All right, hang on. Okay, so here's the website uh, particleflocker.techtoast.co.uk and it has an introduction video here as well, so you can check out you know, what it's all about. But in essence, what it allows you to do is to um, create, for example, a flock of birds, a school of fish, a swarm of bees, and so forth. So if you've got a, kind of a, an animation challenge in your scene where you have to create something like that, you know, it works perfectly with the particle flocker, all right? So let's get into Maya and work with it. Okay. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to use the normal particle system of Maya to create some particles. So what we'll do is we'll go up in our FX menu to end particles. And let's see, we'll create an emitter. We'll hit the option box there. Uh, let's see, we'll set the rate to 100 particles per second. We're going to do it omnidirectional. So they're going to go in all directions. And that's pretty much it. So let's hit create. Okay. So there it is. We're going to set, let's do 500 frames in our animation. And let's just hit play and see what happens. Okay. Now, as you can see, they're being created and they're falling straight down. All right. So we're going to stop that. We're going to go back to frame one. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in our attribute editor to the end particle shape one. And we're going to ignore the solver wind and the solver gravity. Okay. And that's what's pushing the particles down. So being at frame one, let's hit play again. And you can see that they are omnidirectional, like we mentioned. All right, cool. So let's stop that. So we got particles created. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to open uh, the uh, Tech Toast tab here. And we're going to go up to Particle Flocker Windows. All right. Now, there's nothing set up yet. If you look in the uh, scene options, uh, current particle flocker node, nothing there yet. Okay, so we're going to create a new one. And that will give you some options to play with, and we'll look at that later. But now, if we go into our outliner, you see that we have an end particle one, and we have a particle flocker. Okay, and these need to be connected. So we're going to select this, and we're going to control select that. Then we're going to go up to Fields and Solvers under Evix. And we're going to go down to, uh, where do you go, where do you go, where do you go? Assign to Selected. All right. We're going to close that down. We're going to minimize that for a sec. And just let's hit play and see what's going on. Okay. And already you see some slightly different behavior on the particles. Okay. Let's stop that. Let's not open that let's open that okay so we got all that now next what we need to do is we need to add a target okay right now the particles are you know they don't really have a task right now they're not told to follow a path or chase a target or avoid a target or whatnot so what we're going to do is we're going to add a target and we're just simply going to click on it and let's see oh, sorry i need to Select the particle flocker node first, Windows Outliner. Let's select that and we're going to add target. There we go. That has now been added. And now let's hit play again. And let's see what's going on. Now, the little green thing that we have there, that's our target. So let's stop that. Let's select it in our Outliner. Okay, and let's just move that out of the way and see what happens. Okay, let's hit play again. And as you can see, the particles are now moving towards the target. Okay, now the rate is fairly slow. And as you can see, the cloud of particles is quite big. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to frame one. And we're going to go up to these settings here. 
Now, first of all, we have the option number of neighbors. Now, what that means, and I'll just hit play, so we've got some particles going on. Each particle in this particle cloud, if you will, is considering two neighbors to deal with as far as who to follow, who to avoid, as far as collision is concerned, and so forth. Now, you can bump that value up. It doesn't necessarily give you a better performance. In fact, it will be a pretty big impact on your system resources. So if you don't have to, leave that alone, right? Now, void separation, uh, on the other hand, is pretty cool because we'll try to actively tweak that. I'll hit play. And we're just going to bring that way down. OK. And as we do that, you see that they come much closer together. And they're now moving all to that target. OK. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can animate that target. So what we'll do is we'll hit Stop. We got this target selected. Let's go to frame one. OK. We're going to hit. S on our keyboard to key keyframe that. Let's drag this to, let's say, frame 100. We're going to pull that up and move it over there. Hit S again. Let's move to frame, I don't know, close to 200. We'll move it over some more and push that down. Oops, push that down. S to keyframe that again. We'll go to 300, move it over here again. OK, you get the idea, right? Let's go back to frame one. Let's hit play and see what's going to happen here. Now, as you can see, the flock is trying to follow our target. And already you have some more dynamic uh, behavior. OK, cool. So what else do we got? We have the maximum speed and we have the maximum force. So let's see if we can increase that speed a little bit. And as we do that, you can immediately see that we get kind of a flock-like behavior, all right? Kind of what birds would do. Let's make that a little bit slower. Don't go nuts on that. Okay, looks pretty cool. There we go. Now, one last thing we have is the maximum force. Now, in order to avoid our particles cluttering around a stationary target, you can increase the force on that. And as you can see, they are now shooting towards the target. They're kind of clumping. So by keeping that value a bit on the low side, it will look a little bit more natural. Okay. Now, we have a couple of steering types here. In this case, the uh, particles are seeking the target. So let's select flee the target. So what they're doing now is they're doing anything they can to stay away from the target. Now, in this specific scenario, you can see as soon as the target gets close to the particles, the particles move away. And we'll just give that a sec so you can see that. So as it moves over, you can see that it's pushing down, right? So that's one option. Then we have the wander option. And that could be, for example, used, let's say, uh, bees leaving a hive, something like that. OK. And then you have the path follow. And what you see there is it says there is no path. Now, that's something that I'm going to cover in another video, in the next video. Uh, where you can use a CV curve to define a path in the sky and then have your particles follow that exactly. And one other thing that we'll do is we will look at instancing. Because if you are creating a flock of birds, you want to have a flock of birds and not n particles. Okay. So what I will show you is how to link uh, a model of a bird to the particle so the particles get replaced by birds. Right. So we'll do all that in the next video. But hopefully this was a good starting point and a nice introduction. And I'll see you guys next time around. All right. Thank you. Bye.